All of the money and another scandal now surfacing concerning the mainstream liberal media and their obvious shilling for the Clinton campaign and cartel. A senior advisor to Mike Pence criticizing CBS for what appears to be a significant conflict of interest ahead of Tuesday's vice presidential debate. It turns out that Bob Barnett, who is Tim Kaine's Mike Pence stand-in during the mock debates, is married to CBS correspondent Rita Braver. Elaine Keanu of CBS News moderating that debate. Well, joining me now, townhall.com political editor Guy Benson, Republican campaign strategist Tony Syag, both Guy and Tony, Fox News contributors, and thank you both for being here. Let me, uh, hey, Lou. Let me start, Guy, with you. Uh, the degree your, of your concern about that uh, at least uh, appearance of a conflict of interest. There is a lot of incestuousness, isn't there, between media figures and Democrats. This seems to happen quite a lot. Now, I don't think there needs to be intermarriage or inter, you know, <laughs> relationship for, for, for a CBS or a mainstream media reporter to be biased against a Republican. That is par for the course. But it is sort of one of those additional dots that people sometimes yeah. want to connect. And I think it's good to put a little pressure on debate moderators to be fair. I think Lester Holt well, had a lot of pressure did. on him. Yeah, look what it did to uh, Lester Holt. Uh, I mean, right after Lord, Matt the, Lauer, the Clinton exactly. campaign was firing salvo after salvo. By the time the poor guy got to that, uh, uh, that desk that he was sitting at, his knees had to be trembling. What, what do you think, Tony? Well, l look at how the Clintons perfectly staged what ended up happening with Lester Holt, which is essentially handing the debate to Hillary Clinton by just only hammering on Donald Trump. When Matt Lauer was very fair and balanced in the commander-in-chief forum, hitting Hillary Clinton on the server issues, issues with the Clinton Foundation and potential corruption there, he got the, the wind knocked out of him clearly from that on a, a full-on assault from the Clinton Foundation and the mainstream media. What Lester Holt did by asking Donald Trump hard questions was not incorrect. What was incorrect was he didn't ask them of Hillary Clinton. You can't ask exactly. Donald Trump about his tax returns, his views on the Iraq war as a private citizen, the birther issue, without turning was, to Hillary Clinton yeah. and asking her things about the foundation, there Benghazi, and the surf. no yes. attempt whatsoever on the part of Lester Holt to be even-handed, to be fair, to be balanced in his moderation of that debate. And it, uh, by the way, as a result... I truly believe Donald Trump uh, guy got lots, a lot of votes that night because it was so obvious what Holt was doing uh, that uh, the American public saw it. Let me, let me turn uh, to Donald okay. Trump and this, uh, this line of attack that he's on. Follow the money. He's, talking, he's back to his populist roots in this campaign. He is attacking the establishment. He is putting it straightforwardly. Who is getting screwed by the system? What the system is rigged and who? the system is rigged against. You gonna, you gonna answer me there, Guy? What do you think of that? Well, I don't know if, well, okay, I thought you were gonna play a clip. Uh, no, I think that the follow the money line <laughs> is a good one. We don't have that kind of budget here. We're, <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I think the follow the money, the line, uh, that line is a good one for Trump to use, particularly when he can then parlay it not just from her campaign donations, but her foundation donations as well. And I think that that was a missed opportunity in the first debate. I bet you he'll hit it in the upcoming debates, the second and third debate. And you know, Hillary Clinton is going to be sitting there saying, well, you have a problem with your foundation and your so called charity that the Washington Post has reported on. And he has to be ready for that counterattack, but can say, look, I was not allegedly renting out U.S. foreign policy, Madam yeah. Secretary, which is what you were doing at the Clinton Foundation with access and appointments yeah. and contracts and so on and so forth. Yeah, I think Follow it was a money. little more than renting, actually. Guy. <laughs> I, I think it was a time sharing. I, I mean, this thing rose <laughs> to a different level. Uh, Tony, your thoughts on, on the direction he's taking. By the way, one of the things I love is Donald Trump is out there going through, what, th yesterday, three states. He is driving, is full of energy. He's driving the message. Uh, what do you think? Well, I think you're exactly right. For Hillary Clinton to think she had such a brilliant debate performance, she's been hiding away from it since the day after. And Donald Trump is not only on the campaign trail, but he's refocusing the message again on the dynamic you've been talking about, Lou, frankly, for quite a long time, the populist versus those elites in power. Regardless of your political party, if you have an interest in front of the government, you're putting your money on Hillary Clinton because you know she can be bought and paid for. $150 million in speech fees to both Clintons in 10 years and 
And guess what? 22 of those corporations got meetings with Hillary Clinton, had business pending in front of her State Department. When people, forget about your political affiliation, think that's okay and want to promote somebody like that to the presidency, be very wary and careful because you're going to end up getting a lot less than you deserve. And I, I've got to tell you today, uh, gentlemen, I, I, I call for the resignation uh, of James Comey. This is too much. This is beyond the pale. This is an abhorrent performance by a man who pr pretends to being uh, holier than all of the rest of us. And in point of fact, he has inexplicable decision after inexplicable decision. Uh, I, I think it is a horrifying situation in which we find ourselves some 40 days from Election Day that the head of the FBI uh, looks like a man who has sold out lock, stock, and barrel to the Clinton cartel. Uh, Guy Benson, I wish you had more time. Tony Sag, thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Come back Thanks, soon, Luke. gentlemen. Thank you.